Let's talk about nine best practices for using Microsoft Teams. I'm going to break this down into four areas. One of them is going to be the chat. The other one's going to be team channels. Then we'll get into meetings. And lastly, we'll get into files. All right. So starting in the chat window, let's clear the clutter. Delete what you don't need or hide it so you don't have to see it because this chat area can get very long and very unorganized pretty fast. So I'm going to just go through a couple of examples where I'm going to delete something. So I had this one here from this person that's external, not much going on in this chat. I do not need to keep it. If I want to chat with this person again, I certainly can just by knowing their email address or if it were within my organization, if I know their name, I'm never going to search for this information in the chat. So I'm going to go to the three dots beside the chat and then delete. It will give me a warning. And this warning is saying it is deleting it for me, but not that other person. So I'm good with that. Now I'm going to delete a couple more. So this one here from Abigail, I can delete that chat. Now you'll see a lot of things in your chat are meetings that you have with other people, whether they're in, inside your organization or externally. If you initiated the meeting, so meeting with info here, if I go to the three dots, I don't have an option to delete it. I could hide it though, um, but I can't delete the meeting because I initiated the meeting. So I'm going to hide it and I'll do the same thing with this one. Hide it. The weekly meeting here was not initiated by me, so I can delete it. And if I go to this meeting, just so you can see, this particular one has nothing in it, not even a recording. So there's no point in me keeping it. So let's delete it. Now, a best practice for having weekly meetings, especially if it's with someone within your organization, is don't have those meetings in the chat area, which means don't go into Outlook and invite people to a weekly meeting, even though it's a Teams meeting through Outlook, because it doesn't assign that meeting to a team or a channel where it can be stored and organized nicely. When you do it here, it's all in amongst all your other chats that you have, and it might be hard for you to find those previous weekly meetings. So better practice for having weekly meetings, especially with people within your organization, is to have them in one of your teams. So I'll go over this point in a few minutes here. Let's continue with the chats though. So another thing we can do with the chats, if we didn't feel comfortable deleting them, is we can certainly hide them. And you saw me do that with the meetings chat. I can hide them by going to the three dots and choosing hide. If you don't see the hide option on a chat, it could be because you've pinned it. When you pin a chat at the top here, it won't let you hide it because it, when you're pinning, you're kind of saying the opposite. I want this to be really easy and visible. So hiding isn't shown as an option. Let me just quickly demonstrate. So if I uh, pin this meeting, with info and I go to the three dots, hide isn't an option. If I unpin it and I go to meeting with info, hide is an option. Okay. So your menu is changing based on where you have the chat. Okay. But I can do that with a regular chat as well. So this chat I have with Joanne, if I don't want to delete the chat, cause hmm, I might want to keep that conversation going from what she said in the past, I can go to the three dots beside her in my list here. Now she is pinned, so I'll have to unpin this chat and then go find it down here and go to the three dots and then I can say hide. And you see that Joanne is hidden from this list now. Now, just to demonstrate what hiding a chat does, just so you don't get too worried about doing that and losing it forever. It, I said it does come back. So if you do then start a chat with that person again, you'll see the history of the other chats. So if I go to start a new chat with Joanne, just click there. And so then once I start that chat with Joanne and I'm about to type that message, I do see the previous chat show up, even though previously I did hide it. So it does come back when you choose hide, but it saves you some room on the left side here. So that's a best practice with cleaning up the clutter from this chat area. One more thing we can do with our chats, and that's really with one of our chats meetings that we were invited to, is that we can go to the three dots beside that meeting and we can choose to leave it. So aside from deleting the chat, which means it's gone forever from our system, if we leave a meeting, we could actually get invited back in by that host of that meeting. And when they invite us back in, they can choose to show us the history of the chat as well if they, if they so choose to. Okay. So just another, another option for you. Let's go to the teams area now. 
Okay, our first best practice within the Teams area is what I was mentioning within the chat, that if you have a regular meeting with a group of people, make a team for them, have a channel that you meet in, and then that way you can see all the previous meetings in one place and all the notes and corresponding uh, information with that all with all those meetings it's easier it's easier to see and less cluttered for you and if i'm doing my meetings within my team channel then i can also refer to in the meeting other team apps that i might have in that channel so if i have a OneNote or if i have some files in the channel from the meeting i can link to that OneNote page or to the files that i want to refer to and so it's all very interconnected within the channel and easy for people to reference afterwards so in order for you to do a Teams meeting within a channel, you cannot create that Teams meeting in Outlook. So this is the Outlook Teams meeting window that I have open here. There's no place for me to say, say the channel or the team that I want people to be gathering in. So I can't use Outlook to create that meeting. I have to create the meeting from within the channel by going to the, the drop down here to say schedule a meeting, or I could use the calendar within Teams to create the meeting because then it will prompt me for a team and a channel. Okay, so do, do the meeting creation within the Teams environment. That's your best practice. Our next set of best practices all revolve around the Teams and the channels and the posts. So one of the first best practices here is that you always want to reply to an existing post rather than starting a new conversation. And that's just so you can keep things nicely together. So if you look at this post I have on September 7th, training notes or manuals, there are a couple of extra replies to that initial conversation. I can collapse that. And so it kind of makes it a bit neater, but at least everything is all in one place. And I can, in fact, reply to this, even though it's not September anymore, I can reply to this right now and continue on that conversation. So I always use reply in the appropriate areas instead of using a new conversation. Now, the next thing I want you to notice with the post area within the channel that I'm in is the formatting of the post. So this one, again, has a little bit of extra formatting. It's easier to see the information because it has a nice heading on it. Training notes or manuals, very, very bolded, a little bit bigger than the rest of the text. So easier, easier to see. So where you can format your posts. Now, if you're having just a quick conversation, like how was this or what was that, um, you may not need to format it. But if you want people to be able to go back and find that information, it has some relevance to you then put a title on it it's like having a title on your email it makes it easier for them to go back to so let's take this post on September 12th that you know it it has a lot of important information but it could get lost because it's hard to read or it's not as fast to read I'm gonna format this so I'm just gonna edit it and I'm just gonna say dates for training is gonna be my heading And then I'm just going to use a bullet list. So once we use the A in the pencil, we can format this so nicely. Okay, so doesn't that look easier to read, faster to read possibly than it, what it was before? So I'll just save that post as it's edited. Okay, so that's your second best practice within the post area. Format them nicely. Now posts can get long too. Like we could be scrolling for days within a Teams channel as well. So the formatting helps us find stuff, but if there's something that's really special that you need to find really quickly and you're always looking for that thing, then go ahead and save that post. So if I go to my three dots at the top of a post, I have an option to say save this message and watch what happens when I do that. It kind of says saved up here. So now if I go up here to where my profile is, I have an option for saved and that's where I can see all of my saved messages can be neatly put into one area. So the cool thing about this is it lets me save posts from any team, any channel. So right now this is the instructor team training channel. But if you look at the next one here, that's the instructor team, but resources channel and the, all of these are instructor teams. But if I go out, let me go back out to teams. So I'm in the, in the human resources team and the general channel, I'm going to save this post. And if I go back to saved again, now you see it's saving this post along with my other posts that are from other teams and other channels. So this is a great way for you to organize yourself with stuff that's most important for you to see quickly. And if I don't want these saved anymore, I just can click on this little 
icon for the saving or bookmark and it's not no longer saved. And this is only affecting your team's environment. It's not affecting anybody else. Now, another best practice within the teams area and the posts area is to really get the team on board with this place. And to do that, I mean, suggest that rather than emailing each other, if we're on a team together and if we're talking about this topic, why not do it within the team area? So if I'm working with my instructors and we want to talk about training or we want to talk about resources or assessment forms. These are all different channels in our team. I would go to the appropriate channel and have the discussion in the post. I will not email them. Okay, so encourage less emailing, more posting and relevant posting to the relevant team and the relevant channel. Okay, and our last two best practices are in the files area within a team. And that is to actually take advantage of the columns that are available to you to organize your, your files better and stop using so many folders. Folders are a thing of the past. They're great for housing your files together that you want to separate from everything else. But when there's a bit of overlap between the files, it's like, which folder is it in? Then don't put them in folders. Put them in, put that in information that really kind of separates it into a column and keep all those files together. So uh, this is this is a hard one, I know, because we are very used to, uh, I have lots of folders myself, lots of subfolders, and I'm like, oh, this is a lot of work to change this over. But give yourself a little bit of room here. I mean, I'm not saying you can't use any folders at all. Certainly you can use some, but try and use less of them. And so here I have, in my example, I have type of document as a column. And if you notice, I can actually just go to this drop down here. I can sort that column. So all the presentation stuff is together. So it's kind of like rather than having a folder that's called all my presentations, all of my resources, all of my sample files, I'm using that column and that keyword to group those files. In fact, if I really want to group them, I can go to my drop down again and say group by. So I kind of have a folder look without having to have a folder, but I've got the flexibility of looking at my files various different ways. I can also filter by these things um, and, and, and really by any column. So you might notice I have another column here that says the course that each of these files represents. So I can say, well, I only want to see the stuff that's Teams courses. So if I go to the course here and go to my uh, filter by, choose Teams and apply. And now I'm, I'm seeing everything still grouped and by those courses. So that's how powerful those columns can be. So you can have some, some folders if you really, really need them to separate stuff out and you don't want those files together, fine. But if there are files that people get confused with, where is that file? I can never find it because I never know which folder or how deep to go. Then try and get away from the folders there and try and say, let's figure out what kind, what are the differences between these files? What are the columns that could help us group these files and filter these files better so that everybody has a chance to find them? Okay, so that those are your best practices. Hopefully that'll help you. Um, good luck. And if you're looking for more information on how to use Teams better, check out the resource that I have in the description below. I have a free PDF and video for you on the five ways to boost your Teams productivity. So check that out. Have fun with Teams. Thanks.